what the market is showing us. So the first thing we'll go to the 12 month time frame on the dollar. And so far on the dollar, you can see that the trend has been showing us that this is bearish until we run above this high. The overall market structure on the 12 month time frame is bearish. And um, right here, we can see right here, we can see right here, we have an inefficiency resting right here as well. So the next thing we'll do, we'll go to the six month time frame. On the six month time frame, we we'll also have an inefficiency resting right here, relatively equal low resting right here as well. And look what we mitigated right here. We mitigated this inefficiency and then we displaced to the downside as well. So the next thing we we'll do with this information is we go to the three month time frame. We want to see more information. Three month time frame, we have liquidity right here. Price rallied above this liquidity. Took that liquidity, we have inefficiency. Price mitigated the inefficiency. Now we also have this impulse move to the upside before it displacement. We'll go to the monthly. Now you have to recall that we had a 12 month inefficiency resting right here. Let me pull that back. 12 month inefficiency was here. We mitigated it and we dropped down. And you can see how we're really rejecting of that inefficiency. And price came into it the first time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. Now, the thing with a key level is the more price retest a particular key level, the potential that it's getting weaker. But in this case, you can see that each time we are coming into the open of this inefficiency, price is not really having a lot of momentum. The first time we came in, we rejected off a close below a second time rejected, dropped down, close below it. We came again, rejected impulsively. Another time we rejected it again. And now again, we we're coming into that key level. Now look right here. Whenever I see a candle impulsively going to the upside and leaving this kind of bottom, this is also giving me an indication that there could be a probability for this to potentially come down. And now we have an efficiency here acting as another confluence that this could potentially come down now that being said we'll go to the six month time frame on the six month time frame we can see the inefficiency mitigation and then we'll go back to the monthly now on the monthly after we mitigated the 12 months inefficiency we dropped to the downside there are two major phases in the marketplace consolidation expansion before an expansion is consolidation right i'm going to share with you an example right here we have a consolidation everything right here is a consolidation after a consolidation expansion right here we have a consolidation everything here is a consolidation after that expansion after this expansion we had this consolidation expansion after this small consolidation expansion now we're in another consolidation we'll be anticipating to see either expansion to the downside or expansion to the upside an expansion to the downside is basically called a displacement expansion to the upside is an expansion right even though the expansion to the downside is called a displacement, it just expansion just means price going rapidly towards one direction. But it's it's more it's used more when it's going to the upside, and we use displacement when it's going to the downside because it's displacing. Now, I'm going to share with you a little bit of a quantitative a quantitative analysis. This is something you can also add into your knowledge as well. Now, when price expands to the upside and then retraces to the downside, that expansion, when we expand to the upside and then we retrace to the downside, 
we measure the move from the low of the expansion to the high. Now we add 50% to that move. So if the move from the low to the high is 5%, we add 50%, which is 2.5%. So we're expecting a 7.5% move to the upside, right? It's not a certainty that price will do a 7.5 move to the upside. If we're bullish, price could do a 9% move or 8% move or 6% move. But we need to have a range to work with rather than just placing a take profit position at random places because you saw an inefficiency at that high. You just place your, in it, your take profit there. Price may never get to that key level because it doesn't have the momentum to get to that position. But when you do this quantitative analysis, it helps you a lot, right? We're gonna do a few exercises. For example, you can see we have this impulse move right here. After this impulse move, we had a retracement. How to do the quantitative analysis is just very, very simple. You just measure from the low to, to the high. 26% from this low to this high. That means the next impulse move from this low to this high is going to be 26% plus 13%, which is around 39%. We measure from the low to the high. And what do you see right there? 42%. Like I said previously, it could be a little bit higher. It could be a little bit lower. In this case, it's a little bit higher. So if you measure this and you were looking for an area to put your take profit, you'll be looking for 39%. And when you get to 39%, you're looking for things that will act as your confluence to align with that analysis. And what kind of things are you looking for? Inefficiency, liquidity. And right here, there's an inefficiency, there's liquidity. You can basically place your take profit at the inefficiency or a few pips before we get to the inefficiency. And look how nicely price would have delivered into your take profit. We're going to do another exercise. Now, you look at this low. We created this high. That's 16%. And after that, we saw a retracement. The next impulse move, we're anticipating for that to be 16% plus 8%, which is 24%. From this low, we're anticipating to see a 24% move. Now, we're looking for things that will act as our confluence at 24%. And what do we have right there? Inefficiency. Right there is the take profit position. So this is a swing move kind of analysis. If you're someone that likes, you have very tight shadow and you can't really be bothered to be placing a trade every single day, but you want to be investing in the market, whether it's going to be trading or investing in the stock market, this is just a very simple bread and butter. You can use this and you can see how price delivered into that area. So you do your measurements, you look for confluence, inefficiency, previous high, previous low, those are confluence. But personally, I prefer to use an inefficiency because it's usually a draw on liquidity and price will potentially come to that key level. Now, we're currently on the present uh, price action. Now, we're seeing a displacement to the downside. And after this displacement to the downside, we're seeing this consolidation. Now, this consolidation, we don't know whether price, after a consolidation, whether the expansion is going to be to the upside or to the downside. We do not know which one it's going to be, whether it's going to be to the upside or to the downside. We don't know. All we're working with is a probability. Now, let's say, for example, the market is, is intending to go to the downside because the 12 month time frame is showing us that we're still bearish. We're still we're still in a bearish structure in the market. So what we do, we can do the quantitative analysis and say from the high to the low, 13 percent, we add an extra 9 percent to it. That will be an extra 6.5 percent to it, and that will be 19 percent. From this low, we're looking for 19%. We get to 19%. Now we're looking for confluence, inefficiency. 
relative equal lows, trend line liquidity, resting at the 19% key level. So if price should, for any reason, sell off from here, our swing move, we're going to be targeting this 19% move because this is the impulse. This is the retracement. We're anticipating for another impulse. Does that make sense? This is just very simple quantitative analysis. Anyone, even if you're just starting out and trading, you can practice this. You can watch this video over and over again. Go to your trading view, practice it. Look for a high and a low get broken. Once the high gets broken, you can see right here, once the high is broken, all you're looking for is a retest and key level for continuation. Even if a high is not broken, let's say, for instance, in this case, you are anticipating for a run on buy side liquidity, right? If you're anticipating a run on buy side liquidity, now you see a high and then a low. You measure the low, the high. After the retracement into an inefficiency, you add 50% of whatever move price made from the low to the high, add it together, draw it to an inefficiency. Just it's that simple. The same way you're anticipating, we're anticipating for this to sell off. We draw this from the high to the low and then measure from this new current high to the new current position we're anticipating for price to come to. And it aligns with trend line liquidity and inefficiency. So now it doesn't mean for certainty price is going to come here, but this is something to pay attention to because if this should happen, it will create a lot of opportunities for you in the marketplace. It will create opportunity for you to invest in the stock market, in the crypto market. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, so how do I even invest? How do I know what to invest in? I have a lot of uh, people asking me these questions, uh, even though a lot of them are not in my world club. But And I always tell them the same thing, right? Try not to complicate your investment journey by trying to invest in complicated companies. Let's say, for example, what are the things you use in your day-to-day -day life? You can start from there. A lot of you have Netflix subscription. You have Amazon Prime. You use Facebook every day to chat with your friends. You, you, you basically shop on Amazon all the time. Those are investments, you know, rather than just paying money to them why not invest in them as well because the fact that you're using them on a day-to-day -day basis think about how many millions and billions of people just like me and you still using those companies on a day-to-day -day basis right so this is the simplest way to invest. You don't need to go all in on any of them. You can say now every month you're paying 20 pounds or $20 on your Netflix subscription. You can as well also invest maybe 10 or 20 in Netflix every month as well in the actual company. Rather than just buying their subscription, you can as well be investing in the company as well for the long term. It can just be something you do on the side of every other thing you're doing. You just put it on the side and forget about it. For the people in the UK, there are even a lot of ways to do it that is made easy. For example, if you're using like Trade212, you can, you can even put it on autopilot. So every month you can tell the app how much to take from your account just like you're paying your light bill or your electric your electric bill your water bill the same way they take it from your bank where you just you just set it on autopilot at the end of the month they just take it. you can set it with apps like that now every month you can tell them to take ten dollars invested in netflix you don't even need to do it yourself anymore. They just take the 10 pounds and invest it. And whenever you open the app, you see how many 
stocks, how many shares that you've already bought. So this is just an example, right? Like even Apple, a lot of people, a lot of us use Apple. I use an Apple phone. So if I'm using it, that means there are hundreds of millions of other people using it. Like I can't basically leave my house without my phone. That's how I'm going to be able to contact my family, my friends. I'm able to even tell you, good morning, everyone. I'll be live in five minutes. Without my phone, I won't be able to do that. So that means that's another investment right there. So this is just me going off topic a little bit, but let's get back to the charts. And I hope you found that insightful as well. Now, <clears throat> now, looking at what the dollar is doing, if we should see a drop on the dollar, it's going to affect the foreign currencies, the stock market. It's going to affect the crypto market. It means that there could potentially be a huge spike in price that could create a lot of million years is going to create so many, it's going to change so many people's lives, you know, including mine, <laughs> to be honest, because I also have investments, the things that I'm investing in, just not trading. So trading is just one thing I do on the side, but the main thing I'm fully into is investing in the stock market and the crypto markets. Um, that was how I got into trading. I started out by investing in, in crypto, in the stock market. That was why I made my very first six figures. So from then, I started to learn how can I make more money while actively engaging in the market because it was becoming a little bit boring where I just wake up in the morning because my portfolio was making me a full-time income that I didn't need a job. But now I felt like, now what do I do with myself? All day, I'm just going to stay at my charts or what? You know, then I started to learn how to trade. So it's not really just about investing and living it for the long term. I can actively participate in the marketplace. So now looking at what the dollar is doing, we're going to be looking at what the euro is doing as well and correlate that and look for potential areas to wait for price to come into. Now, trading is more technical than investing. And the reason for that is because of a lot of, there's a lot of things that make it disad that disadvantage. A lot of things make it disadvantageous, right? For traders, things like slippage from brokers, probably not activating you into a trade. So, so many of those things affect trading, and it's not really that that much in investing. The only thing with investing is that. It takes more time to make money, but you can have a little bit of peace of mind. And the thing with trading is, it wasn't designed for you to have any peace of mind until prices hit either your take profit or your stop loss. So you're trying to go in and out and you're trying to be precise. In investing, you don't need to be precise. Let's say, for example, I want to invest in the euro. I don't need to be precise. I can look at the euro and see that the euro is priming for a buy. I've seen a four hour break of structure. I can just buy it like right now. I wouldn't really care whether I'm buying it at the overall low of the overall high. And let's say I'm looking for, for, for example, if I'm trading it in the, as a call or put option, option trading, I don't need to be too precise. I can just see that, okay, it's already priming for itself. I can just use this overall high. If price goes to 107, then I guess I've taken a loss and I'm targeting for it to go to this low. And just set it for like six months and move on with my day. So wherever it's at in six months, it could be in profit, maybe not hit the take profit. I can just close that. And move on with my day so it's a little bit more easier 
trading and investing in that way than it is in trading forex because in forex you're trying to be so precise you want price to reject from here your stop loss here your broker knows that they see all your orders they can see where your stop loss is kept so they can use the news like what you saw right here there are some brokers that you're not going to see this weeks the weeks are not the same on every broker that's one thing you can go back and look at every single chart you see that the weeks are not the same for example look at this week let's measure this from here to here 0 0.33 percent this one is 0 0.33 percent 0 0.33 percent 0.32 percent you see that not all the brokers are given the exact same information out of four brokers that i just showed you right now three have the same information one has a slightly different information so they are offering price at a different price to the other brokers and it's the same if we start going from the top to bottom of every single week you will see that every broker is going to offer price at a slightly different position to the other brokers now <clears throat> now what we're anticipating to see on the dollar right now is if we're going to be bearish what we want to see from here is a four hour break which we can see a low a high a drop a break now after the break the next thing we could anticipate to see would be a retest and if we're bearish a continuation to the downside but also put into perspective we have this inefficiency and you can see that price mitigated it and then we're seeing this expansion you can see how we rejected off it. So this is how they play us. This is what makes trading hard because now you're looking for a sell overall and then it came into the point of interest for itself and it's showing you this kind of impulse. Now you feel like, should I now buy this or should I wait for the sell? Now you could say, okay, I'm gonna buy this and then you buy it and something happens and it runs your stop loss. Or you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it. And then you're waiting for it to come into a key level to sell it. It comes in there, shows you a small time frame shift. You sell it and price just expands and takes this high. Now you've taken a loss. But in investing, you don't really need to even be that precise. You wouldn't really be bothered because already this is your invalidation key level. Price, this is your entry. The moment price is in here, you are in. And you move on. So if price decide to come in here 1,000 times, you don't really care. When it's done, it's gonna do what it wants to do, what you've already outlined for it to do. I'm gonna show an example of one asset that um, I talked about the other day. I talked about this asset the other day and I've talked about this asset before previously as well. I think over a month ago, I talked about this asset. And now when I got into this asset, right, it was right here. I use this inefficiency as my entry. When price tapped this inefficiency, this right here was my break of structure. So the moment I saw this, this break of structure right here, I wanted price to come into this inefficiency to buy it. And it came into the inefficiency. The moment it tapped in, I just bought it. I didn't really care whether it's gonna keep going down, even though I bought around 2.3 and then it kept going down to like 2.2, .2, but I, I could care less. I, like, I don't mind it going even lower because it's investing but in trading if it's going lower i do mind because it's 
most likely going to hit my stop loss. And if it hits my stop loss, then the next thing, it's now reversing. So that's this is what makes it harder in trading rather than investing. Investing is a little bit more easier than trading because in trading, you're trying to be in and out. You're trying to be very precise. And it's not easy for you to just be that precise. You, you, you don't work for the banks. You don't work for the institutions. They're the ones that offer the price. And your broker is also working so hard to make sure that you don't make any money. So this is just an example of trying to differentiate the two, the challenges and everything surrounding trading. So I'm still anticipating for price to go to the downside on the dollar. But as you can see, we need to get at this key level. So anything can happen. We can still run this high. But personally, I still want to see lower prices on the dollar. And in the next live stream, I'm going to do in Vasco relation with the euro and uh, also show my key level where I'm going to be watching on the euro as well. So if price comes there, then we'll potentially we'll be looking for itself. So I appreciate you all for tuning in today. I appreciate all your prayers and everything. You all are amazing. Thank you. And in the next live stream, I'll talk to you soon.